there are places to go when you're out here. You just have to look. I haven't gone out of my way to play casino poker for a long time. Maybe my Vegas experience gave me a lifelong reality check. It took the gamble out of me. But there's something about having five or six free hours, along with free parking. You just have to play. In Vegas, I had all the money I needed to grind out a living for as long as I wanted. The poker boom of the early 2000s rolled me a Sunday hop, and I booted it. A pop-up that I just had to catch, and I let it drop. It's still hard to think about. Just the scent of this place reminds me why I quit poker. If I was in Vegas and I saw a game like that, I would I would just like walk out of the room and get my car and find some place else to play. But since it's kind of the only place that I could go here, just since um, I had parked the truck and it was like out of hours, uh, I played. So um, I played because I could tell like right away just by the players and how they were conducting themselves at the table they like didn't have a clue and I played because I really just wanted to play <laughs> I had the itch I haven't played live I haven't played live poker in a long time um, so yeah I was saying like it's it was a really weird game it was a 1-2 NL game um, the min max bind was 6100 which I mean I don't know if I've ever seen that outside of like a home game You know, and um, <laughs> they they use all one dollar checks. So the table was just like full of these one dollar checks, just stacked every which way, and it was crazy. Um, the rake was the main reason why I said that I would never play in that game if I had games of choice. Um, I won like two out of the first. Four pots, I think, and I was like, okay, it must be up like 18 bucks. So I like restacked my checks and I counted them. I was like, oh, I'm up like 13, and I kind of went went back in the hands. I was like, no, like I got a raise, like I raised four x, got a collar, uh, got a flop bet. Then we checked. And it's like no, like so I I figured out that the rake was like this. So I don't know if you've ever seen seen anything like this but before the hand started once once the blinds were posted the dealer took the small blind out of the pot and put it in, and put it in the, the jackpot box and that was before first action which sucks because like that disincentivizes you by like I, like if you go by like purely like expressed odds that disincentivizes a preflop raiser by 30 percent um, when it comes to the value of um, picking up the pot so that was fucked and then once the flop hit no matter how many players there were even if it was like blind versus blind the dealer would take two bucks now I didn't see it but I would imagine that if it folded to the blinds now remember the the, the small blinds gone and the big blind check if they saw a flop the the dealer would just take the pot <laughs> would just take the pot so I don't know. I, I I just thought of that now. I'm like, what would happen if it was blind versus blind? Because the dealer like just every flop two bucks. You know, the the pot could be six bucks, bucks it could be eleven, whatever. And then once the pot got to fifteen, 
the dealer would take two more dollars out of the pot, and then once they got the 20, it would be another one dollar plus another <laughs> jackpot dollar. So like, the casino just murdered these people so hard. And um, they didn't seem to have a clue. You know, they, they just played poker. But having said that, like, the game was, like, like kind of good, I guess. You know, I don't know how many bets per hour I would expect to walk away with. Like, you know, if if I rolled through like like ten thousand hands there, like even even with that rake, I in a game like that, you know, with with the rake and the small stacks, like I feel like I could still, you know, bang out like six or seven big blinds an hour, which which is pretty good. That's that's saying that the game is really weak. So anyway, uh, small win tonight. Uh, one of forty six bucks. Just, just play two hours, you know. Uh, I can think of maybe just like a couple interesting hands to talk about, just given players and chip stacks. Um, so, yeah, I guess let's go over a couple hands and let's call let's let's call it a day. I gotta, I don't know when I gotta be up tomorrow. To be honest with you, I have this load going from. Um, Los Angeles to El, El Paso, and I got as far as like the Coachella area. I met the Morongo Casino, so I might not be quite as far east as Coachella, but I don't know. I don't know this this area very well. This this region is foreign to me. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it for now. I made the mistake of, of of getting Panda Express with just one bottle of water, so I had to go styrofoam for seconds on the water all right let's talk about hands so I'm in the big blind here with 10 5 suited a guy in middle position raised it up to five which is sort of the standard raise for this table I think it's the short stacks with a hundred dollar maximum buy-in I have him sort of tilting so knowing that it's gonna be one of my last hands uh, I decided to make the call and go to a flop so the flop comes out um, 10 high, giving us top pair. Board is three toned. I decided to check to the razor, and he comes out for seven bucks, and I pretty quickly make the call. No sense in raising. Uh, turn card pairs the four, bringing out a backdoor spade draw, and um, it sort of quickly goes check check, which makes me pretty confident that I've got the best hand. Um, the river, though, brings really a bad card. Um, Queen of Diamonds. Uh, it, it just sort of brings in all kinds of hands that were behind us and now are beating us. We have Ace Queen, King Queen, Queen Jack, um, Queen Nine, even maybe, maybe like a little Queen Eight in there. It also brings in King Jack for a straight. Um, I check it over to him. And he decides to lead out for 18, which is basically half pot. So getting about three to one on a call. And I'm, I'm trying to kind of get a live read off him here just by messing with my chips and sort of double checking my cards. And he's not giving me much. So I end up deciding that I'm not ahead here enough of the time to, um, for the call to be profitable. All right, guys, I uh, hate to say it, but the graphics kind of took a shit on me. So I'm just going to kind of talk you guys through this. Um, we do have Jack Tennis of Diamonds um, under the gun. Effective stacks of about 170 bucks. I decided to conform to the $5 raise because, number one, the stacks are all pretty short given the $100 maximum buy-in. And secondly, it's, it's, it's a very loose, passive table. And if I get one of the boards that I'm looking for, I'm not going to have too much problem um, getting somebody to stack off um, a worse hand. So I get two callers, the guy immediately to my left and the big blind. Both these guys have me like just covered. Uh, flop comes out pretty good. It comes 10 high. It comes out 10, 4, 3, a couple of spades. After some thinking, um, I decide to, after the big blind checks to me, to bet eight bucks. I I think I could have gone a little bit bigger here, like 10, 
maybe 12. I can't think of any hands that they would call $8 with that I'm beating but not call 10. So, um, yeah, I think we're a little bit on the small side given these players, but overall I, 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 I think it's fine. Um, these guys are definitely going to be calling with like wheel draws, um, pair of fours, pair of threes, six, seven, you know, even hands like, like three, five. Um, I fire out eight and the guy to my left immediately folds and the kid in the big blind who's obviously like 21, 22 years old, beginning player, uh, he makes the call with like no hesitation. So, given that really quick call, um, I'm sort of taking out wheel draws. I'm taking out six, seven. Um, he may have a hand like ace, four, four, five. So, um, yeah. But overall, I think I think his his range here is mostly weighted toward um, tens and spade draws. So, board of ten, four, three, two spades. Again, I have jack 10 of diamonds. The turn brings out an offsuit seven. Uh, pretty reasonable card. And uh, he again checks to me. And I decided to target, um, I decided to make a targeting bet of $11. I'm basically targeting uh, a pair of fours and spades. I think with both those hands, I think he's just not really going anywhere. Um, so I bet 11 to see what he does and again he like wastes no time calling so now I think I think he for sure has um, a 10 uh, or spades he might even have a hand like like pocket jacks or pocket queens just kind of the way he plays uh, turn <laughs> is a pretty nasty card it's a nine of spades so not only does spades come in but now one of the tens that I was beating I am now losing to which is 10 nine he quickly checks, and I've got a few choices here, but I think I think going for a thin value is pretty bad. Uh, I think bombing is pretty bad. So I just check behind, and uh, he rolls over ace-10 and takes it down. So it's 7.30, almost 8, so it's past my bedtime. I've been up since like 1 o'clock this morning. That's, that's a long time. Which means I'm not getting out of here until morning tomorrow. Like morning, morning, not not my morning. So I have all kinds of time to get this back to El Paso with this load. So a um, couple light driving days coming up, which is fine. I've been going pretty hard. So, I'm on my way to El Paso, and I should be getting, like, just like one day of home time. Um, like in the next mm, six, seven, maybe eight, eight days. So, that'll be good. Get the license renewed, see the family. Um, so, yeah. Lights out.